I never thought I'd miss his grumbling. Damn it, I practically hated those endless lectures about how to mow the lawn properly or change the oil in the car. But now, standing by the freshly dug grave of John Peterson, my father-in-law, I'd give anything to hear his boring voice one more time. The rain was pouring down as if the sky was also mourning the departure of this stubborn old man. My wife, Sarah, was sobbing into my shoulder. Her mother, Martha, stood a little apart, motionless as a statue, with a glassy stare. Let's go home, Mom, Sarah said quietly when the ceremony was over. Martha slowly turned her head, as if not understanding where the sound was coming from. Yes, of course, dear, her voice sounded as if she was speaking from somewhere far away. At home, the atmosphere was oppressive. Sarah was bustling in the kitchen, preparing coffee for relatives and friends who had come to express their condolences. I tried to keep the conversation going, but kept finding myself watching Martha. She sat in John's chair, mechanically nodding in response to words of sympathy. When the last guest left, Sarah sat down next to her mother. Mom, why don't you stay with us for a few days? Martha shook her head. No, honey. I need to. I need to be at home. There's, there's so much to do. I can stay with you, Sarah offered. You don't have to, dear. I'll manage. Her voice sounded firm, but her eyes. There was such emptiness in them that it made me feel sick inside. I'll drive you, I said, standing up. We were silent the whole way to the Petersons' house. When I parked in front of their now just her house, Martha suddenly grabbed my hand. Thank you, Mike. You're a good boy. John always said that. I looked at her in surprise. John had never said anything like that to me. But now was not the time to argue. You're welcome, Martha. If you need anything, call us. She nodded and got out of the car. I watched her slowly walk to the house feeling that something was wrong. Something had changed, and it wasn't just Martha's gray hair that had turned completely white over the past week. A week had passed since the funeral. Sarah visited her mother every day, but each time she returned more and more worried. She barely eats, my wife said, returning once again for Martha's, and she doesn't seem to sleep at all. I found her sitting in John's chair at three in the morning. She was just staring into space. Maybe she needs professional help? I suggested, stirring the sauce for the pasta. Sarah shook her head. I suggested that. She flatly refuses. Says she'll manage on her own? Classic Martha. I sighed. Always been damn stubborn. You know, Sarah came up to me and hugged me from behind. Maybe we should invite her to live with us for a while? I froze. The thought of Martha living with us caused a strange feeling of anxiety. Are you sure that's a good idea? What else can we do? Sarah's voice sounded desperate. I'm afraid to leave her alone. I turned to my wife. Okay, let's try. But talk to her first. Make sure she really wants this. The next day, Sarah went to her mother with our proposal. She returned late in the evening, looking completely exhausted. Well? I asked putting down my book. Sarah shook her head. She refused. Said she didn't want to inconvenience us. And you know what's strangest? When I was leaving, she asked if you could stop by tomorrow. Said she needed help with some repairs. I raised my eyebrows in surprise. Me? Why not you? No idea. Maybe something really broke, and she knows I don't understand these things. All right. I shrugged. I have a day off tomorrow, so I can stop by. The next morning, I drove up to the Petersons' house. Martha opened the door, and I was shocked by her appearance. She looked different. She was wearing a light summer dress, her hair was styled, and she even seemed to be wearing makeup. Mike, dear, come in, she smiled, and there was something elusive in that smile. I entered the house, feeling a bit out of place. Sarah said you needed help with some repairs? Oh, yes. Martha waved her hand. There, in the living room, a shelf has come away from the wall. Could you take a look? I went into the living room. Indeed, one of the shelves was tilted. It's nothing serious, I said, examining the mount. Just a screw that's come loose. I'll tighten it, and everything will be fine. 
You're so handy. Martha's voice sounded right in my ear, making me start. I turned around. She was standing very close, looking at me with a strange gaze. Ah, uh, thanks, I mumbled, feeling increasingly uncomfortable. Do you have a screwdriver? Of course, I'll bring it right away. She ran her hand over my shoulder before going to get the tool. While I was fixing the shelf, Martha didn't leave my side for a moment. She constantly found excuses to touch me either to hand me a tool or to brush off non-existent dust from my shirt. That's it, I said, finishing the work. Now it should hold firm. You're my hero. Martha suddenly hugged me. I don't know what I'd do without you. I carefully freed myself from her embrace. Martha, are you all right? She looked at me with some desperate determination. You know, Mike, I'm so lonely. John, he's gone, and I... I'm still here. Still alive. I didn't know what to say. The situation was becoming increasingly awkward. Maybe you should talk to Sarah? Or perhaps to a professional? Martha shook her head. No, you don't understand. I need... I need to feel alive. And before I could understand anything, she'd pressed herself against me and tried to kiss me. I recoiled, stunned. Martha, what are you doing? There were tears in her eyes. I'm sorry, I... I don't know what came over me. I grabbed my jacket. I... I need to go. And I ran out of the house, feeling my heart pounding. What the hell had just happened? I sat in the car, parked a few blocks from the Peterson's house, trying to collect my thoughts. My hands were still shaking when I took out my phone. Should I call Sarah? Tell her? But how the hell do I explain what just happened? All evening I was on edge. Sarah was talking about her day at work, and I nodded, not really listening. One question kept spinning in my head. To tell or not to tell? Mike? Are you listening to me? Sarah's voice pulled me out of my thoughts. Sorry, dear. I just was thinking about work. I lied, feeling everything inside me clinch with guilt. Sarah frowned. You're acting strange today. Is everything all right? I opened my mouth, ready to tell everything, but at the last moment changed my mind. Yes, I'm just tired. I think I'll go to bed early. At night, I couldn't sleep for a long time. Sarah was quietly snoring next to me, while I stared at the ceiling, replaying the day's events in my head. What the hell had come over Martha? And what should I do now? In the morning, I woke up feeling like I hadn't slept at all. At breakfast, Sarah brought up the subject of her mother again. You know, I still think we should invite mom for dinner. Maybe this Friday? I almost choked on my coffee. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why? Sarah looked at me in surprise. You said yourself she was doing better. Yes, but... I frantically searched for a reason. Maybe she needs more time? We shouldn't pressure her. Sarah sighed. Mike, she's my mother. I can't just sit and watch her suffer. We have to do something. I realized I was losing this argument. Okay. I gave in. Let's invite her for Friday. All day at work, I couldn't concentrate. The thought of the upcoming dinner with Martha caused either panic or anger. How could she put me in such a position? How am I supposed to look her in the eye now? When I got home in the evening, Sarah greeted me with a smile. I called mom. She agreed to come on Friday. Great. I forced a smile. You know, Sarah came up to me and hugged me. I'm so glad I have you. I don't know how I would have coped with all this without your support. Guilt hit me with renewed force. I hugged my wife tightly, afraid that if I let go, everything would fall apart. Friday came too quickly. I was nervous all day, unable to find peace. When the doorbell rang, I nearly had a heart attack. Sarah opened the door. Mom, I'm so glad to see you. Martha entered the house, and our eyes met. Something flashed in her eyes, shame, remorse, but she quickly looked away. Hello, Mike, she said quietly. Hello, Martha, I replied, trying to make my voice sound normal. Dinner was held in a strange atmosphere. Sarah tried to keep the conversation going, talking about work, about plans for the future. Martha responded monosyllabically, avoiding looking in my direction. 
I felt like I was under interrogation, afraid to say an extra word. After dessert, Sarah got up from the table. I'll go make some tea. Mom, maybe you can help me? When they left for the kitchen, I could finally exhale. But a minute later, Martha returned alone. Mike, she said quietly, sitting down next to me. We need to talk. I tensed. I don't think that's a good idea. Please. There was desperation in her voice. I need to explain myself. I nodded silently, preparing for the worst. What happened? Martha began. I don't know what came over me. I just... I'm so lonely, Mike. After John's death, I feel so useless, so old. I looked at her and for the first time noticed how exhausted she looked. Deep shadows had settled under her eyes. New wrinkles appeared at the corners of her mouth. I didn't mean anything by it, she continued. It's just for a second it seemed to me that if someone, if you... God, I don't know what I was thinking. I sighed. Martha, I understand you're having a hard time. But what you did... I know, she interrupted me. It was terrible. I'm not asking for forgiveness, I just... I need you to know. I'm not going to repeat anything like that. I just want to forget about it and maybe try to get my life back on track. At that moment, Sarah returned with a tray. What are you two whispering about? I looked at Martha, then at Sarah. We were just discussing how to help your mom cope with loneliness. Sarah Bean. Really? Mom, it's wonderful that you're ready to talk about this. Martha smiled weakly. Yes, dear. I think I really do need help. When Martha left, Sarah hugged me. Thank you, honey. I don't know what you said to her, but it seems to have helped. I hugged my wife back, feeling a strange mix of relief and anxiety. Something told me this wasn't the end of the story. A week had passed since our dinner with Martha. I tried to get what had happened out of my head, but my thoughts kept returning to that day in the Peterson's house. Sarah noticed my distraction. Mike! What's been going on with you lately? You seem distant. I sighed. It was time to talk. Sarah, we need to discuss something. I began, feeling my heart pounding in my chest. She frowned. Sound serious. What happened? I took a deep breath. It's about your mom. That day when I went to fix the shelf. And I told her everything. About Martha's strange behavior. About her attempt to kiss me about our conversation during dinner. Sarah listened silently, her face growing paler. When I finished, a heavy silence hung in the room. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Sarah finally asked, her voice trembling. I didn't know how, I admitted. I was afraid you'd, I don't know, get angry at me or think I did something wrong. Sarah shook her head. Mike, you're my husband. I trust you. But mom, God, What's happening to her? I think she's just very lonely, I said quietly. Losing your father must have affected her greatly. Sarah stood up and started pacing the room. But trying to seduce you? This, this isn't like mom. She's always been so reserved, so proper. People change when they lose loved ones, I remarked. Maybe she needs professional help? Sarah stopped and looked at me. You're right. We need to do something. But how do we convince her to see a psychologist? She's always been against that nonsense, as she called it. I thought for a moment. Maybe we should talk to her together? Show that we both care and want to help. Sarah nodded. Yes, that might work. But, Mike, are you sure you can interact normally with her after what happened? I stood up and went to my wife, taking her hands. Sarah, your mom is important to me because she's important to you. Yes. What happened was unpleasant and awkward, but I understand it was a cry for help, not a real intention. Sarah hugged me. I'm so grateful for your understanding. You know, many men would just run away from such a situation. I kissed the top of her head. I'm not many men. I'm your husband, and we'll get through this together. The next day, we went to Martha's. The whole way there, Sarah was nervous, fidgeting with her seatbelt. Do you think she'll agree? She asked as we approached the house. I don't know, I answered honestly. But we have to try. Martha seemed surprised to see us both on her doorstep. Sarah, Mike? 
Did something happen? Mom, we need to talk, Sarah said, entering the house. We sat in the living room. Martha looked tense, shifting her gaze between me and Sarah. What did you want to talk about? She finally asked. Sarah took a deep breath. Mom, we know it's hard for you after Dad's death. And we know about what happened with Mike. Martha turned pale. He told you? She looked at me in horror. Yes, Mom, Sarah said gently. And we're not here to judge you. We want to help. Martha covered her face with her hands. Oh, God, I'm so ashamed. I don't know what came over me. Sarah, darling, forgive me. I decided to intervene. Martha, we understand you're going through a difficult time. But maybe you should talk to someone, professional? Martha raised her head. You mean a psychologist? She snorted. I'm not crazy. No one is saying you're crazy, I said gently. But sometimes we all need help to cope with loss and loneliness. Sarah took her mother's hand. Mom, please. We love you and want you to be happy. Just think about it, okay? Martha was silent for a long time, looking at the floor. Finally, she said quietly, Okay, I'll think about it. As we drove home, Sarah looked thoughtful. What are you thinking about? I asked. About how easily we can lose ourselves when we lose loved ones, she replied. And about how important it is to have people around who care about you. I took her hand. We'll get through this, Sarah. Together. She smiled weakly. I know. It's just, it makes me think about the future. About what will happen when we get old. Hey, I said, trying to lighten the mood. We're far from old age. Let's deal with the present first, okay? Sarah nodded, but I could see the thought had taken root in her mind. A month had passed since our talk with Martha. During this time, a lot had changed. Martha, to our surprise, actually started seeing a psychologist. Sarah regularly visited her mother, and each time she returned with news of small but significant improvements. You know, Sarah said to me one evening, I never thought I'd say this, but it seems this whole situation, it's actually brought mom and me closer. I raised an eyebrow. Really? Sarah nodded. Yes. We never really talked about feelings, about fears before. And now... It's as if it opened some door between us. I hugged my wife. I'm glad that at least something good came out of this situation. And you know what else? Sarah continued. I started looking at old age and loneliness differently. Before, it seemed like something distant, something that didn't concern me. And now, now you understand that it can happen to anyone. I finished for her. Exactly, she sighed. And it makes me think about how we're living now. About our relationship, about friendship, about family. I pondered. Indeed, this whole story with Martha made me look at many things in a new way. You know, I said, maybe we should spend more time on our relationship? Not just romance, but just communication, spending time together? Sarah smiled. I'd like that. Maybe we could start with weekly date nights? Great idea. I kissed her. And maybe we should see our friends more often? I was just thinking the other day that we haven't met with Jim and Karen for several months. Oh, yes. Sarah perked up. And you know, maybe we should think about some common hobby? Something we could do together, even when we're old and gray. I laughed. What, already planning our retirement? Sarah playfully pushed me. Hey, Better to be prepared than to look for common interests in a nursing home. We both laughed, but behind this laughter was an understanding of the seriousness of the topic. The next day, we decided to visit Martha together. When we drove up to her house, I felt a slight nervousness. Despite the fact that a lot of time had passed since that awkward incident, I still felt a bit uncomfortable alone with her. Martha met us at the door. I was amazed she looked much better than the last time I saw her. There was a sparkle in her eyes, and a slight smile played on her lips. Sarah, Mike, how glad I am to see you. She hugged her daughter, and, to my surprise, me too. We entered the house, and I noticed that new photos had appeared in the living room, not just old ones with John, but recent ones with Sarah and me. Mom, it's so cozy here, 
Sarah remarked, looking around. Martha nodded. Yes, I decided to refresh the place a bit. You know, Dr. Harris, that's my psychologist, said it's important to create new memories, not just preserve old ones. I was impressed. Looks like these sessions are really helping? Martha looked at me seriously. Yes, Mike. And I'd like to apologize to you once again. What I did, it was wrong and selfish of me. I shook my head. Martha, you don't have to. I understand you were going through a difficult time. That's no excuse, she said firmly. But I'm working on myself. And I'm very grateful to both of you for your support. Sarah hugged her mother. We'll always be here, Mom. We spent the whole evening at Martha's, talking about everything work, plans for the future, even politics. I noticed how the dynamics of our relationship had changed. Now it wasn't just formal communication between a mother-in-law and son-in-law, but something deeper and more sincere. When we were about to leave, Martha suddenly said, You know, I've been thinking, maybe I should sign up for some classes? I've always wanted to learn how to paint. Sarah beamed. Mom, that's a wonderful idea. I nodded. Indeed, Martha. That could be very interesting. And, Martha added with a slight smile, maybe you could keep me company sometimes? You know, so the old lady doesn't feel lonely among the youth. Sarah and I looked at each other and said simultaneously, of course. On the way home, Sarah looked thoughtful. What are you thinking about? I asked about how life sometimes teaches us lessons in the most unexpected ways, she replied. Who would have thought that this whole situation would end up bringing us closer? I took her hand. You know, maybe that's the point to learn from difficulties and become better? Sarah smiled. Maybe. And you know what? I think we'll manage old age. If we're together. I squeezed her hand. We definitely will. Now. How about we start planning our first weekly date? Sarah laughed. Let's. And you know, I think we should invite Mom for dinner next weekend. Maybe she'll tell us about her first painting lessons. I nodded, feeling the weight of the last few months finally starting to lift. Great idea. Who knows, maybe we'll all find a new hobby together. When we pulled up to our house, I looked at Sarah and realized that despite all the difficulties we'd been through, our relationship had only grown stronger. We learned to understand each other better, to value every moment together, and not to fear the future. After all, the line between love and loneliness is not so insurmountable if there are people around who are ready to support and understand. And even though life sometimes presents unexpected lessons, it's these lessons that help us grow and become better both individually and together. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.